After taking some time to learn how 3D printers work, you probably realize how complicated these Vorum builds can get. They are not plug and play printers and tailor more to hobbyists who are willing to take the time to set up and modify them as needed. Many people like the core XY design and related features, but it adds complexity. We started by figuring out the size and color scheme of the printer, and now it's time for the critical decision. Buy a build kit or self-source all the parts. The choice you make now can potentially lead to a lot of hassle and frustration, especially if you are impatient. Speaking of which, here is your last chance to back out. Once you start buying stuff, there really is no turning back. The kit is comparatively easy. You pick a manufacturer and find a distributor that has it in stock. It ships to you, and if it's lost, it's easier to track. Assuming you bought a good quality kit, it should have everything you need to get building. For cons, quality was a concern when kits first came out because you didn't really know what parts they used. They have to be sold for a profit somehow. But now, with the printer being several years old, that is less of a concern, especially since most reputable manufacturers include a BOM, or Bill of Materials, based off the Voron specs. One other con is the higher upfront costs, which varies as more websites offer some customization. Self-sourcing is the original method preferred by the community, especially the purists. Since there are no custom parts in the build, anyone should be able to buy anything from any company from anywhere in the world. However, this has fallen out of favor by many, mainly due to time and budget reasons. First, let's discuss time. To be blunt, while the official documentation is quite good, it's scattered around. On the website under printers, there is a sourcing guide which brings up an Excel spreadsheet with the parts and places where you can buy them. It even lists alternatives in case one place is sold out or has an extended shipping time. However, this sheet is inaccurate. If you return to the main website, go to documentation, sourcing information, it mentions that you have to use the configurator to generate a customized bomb, which is considered the absolute guide for what is actually required to build a printer. It mentions that the sourcing guide, aka Excel sheet that we were looking at earlier, is mostly incorrect in terms of quantity. So let's walk through it. Let's choose printers, Voron 2, configurator. Here is a quick message about the process. I am choosing direct feed, new build, blind joints, generic cable chains, and 300 size. When you get to the end, click show to generate the custom bomb. The parts list and quantity are definitely different than the sourcing guide we saw earlier, which is also linked at the bottom. Quantities shown here are the bare minimum. Another Voron philosophy is building to original spec before modding anything. The challenge is figuring out what constitutes a quote unquote stock 2.4. It has changed over the years. On the sourcing guide, you will see references to a SKR 1.4 controller, which appears to be discontinued. At the time of this video, I am referencing the assembly manual dated 4th of July, 2022. Here, the diagrams are for a more recent Octopus controller. The manual also references the V6 hotend and afterburner, in which there have been newer and subjectively better choices, depending who you ask. If not mistaken, most of these parts are interchangeable and allow for individual customization. If you try to Google what is a stock Voron, you are going to get subjective feedback. You need to research and determine what parts work with what, and flip between multiple resources to figure out any potential compatibility issues. Some parts may need to be substituted, but not all substitutions have been tested thoroughly by the community. Some parts only work on earlier versions of Voron and vice versa. While this issue can crop up with the kits as well, those manufacturers have done a great job keeping up with the latest trends in part choices. By now you have seen how self-sourcing takes time, but it gets worse. Let's go in more detail. I used the bomb from a kit manufacturer to cross-reference the bomb from the Voron web configurator, which was then cross-referenced with the sourcing guide dated February 1st. I excluded printed parts, hot ends, Raspberry Pis, etc. that do not usually come with the kits either. To make it a bit more realistic, I use the quantity from the kit since it includes extra fasteners, which is just good practice. FYI, there are a lot of extra parts on the kit bomb that are excluded from the web configurator. There is no way I can make a fair direct comparison, so take this all with a grain of salt. I cleaned up the sourcing guide to make it easier to read. 
Starting from top down, I went through and clicked on the links for every part. I wanted to find the best price and note there are affiliate links mixed in. Where possible, I noted the price from multiple sites and if a part was out of stock. The green highlighted columns were for Bolt Depot and McMaster Car respectively. Highlighted yellow is AliExpress along with the shipping dates as those parts tend to take longer to arrive. In gray is Amazon, pink for DigiKey, and all others in the last column. The cells highlighted red are the lowest prices. You will immediately notice that sometimes the difference between two day and two month shipping is only a few bucks in part price. This is where it gets really time consuming, figuring out what should be ordered, where, and when. Here are my observations. You will find the majority of fasteners from Bolt Depot and McMaster Car. Sometimes it's cheaper to order in bulk from McMaster, which is great for spare parts or building multiple printers. Wherever possible, consider Amazon if you have a Prime membership. Be aware that with AliExpress, the links don't always direct you to the proper spec of a product. It may be the wrong thickness or bore size. These changes reflect in the price and shipping times. Each part has their own shipping costs that you must pay attention to because it may end up being more expensive than expected. Worse, some parts like 625 bearings have limits of one order per customer, so I had to order from two different manufacturers to get the total quantity needed. It sucks because Fushi bearings were flagged for early failures in the configurator notes. It took me a while to realize this, but the bottom tabs of the sourcing guide have links to options such as the hot end assemblies, which are separate from the main printer build. Make sure you account for all these extra fasteners, fans, and wiring. There is a good chance you will miss something and have to put in additional orders as time goes on. Get familiar with the assembly manual so you know which parts go where in the build. Some parts are only sold by or in stock at one place, so if it's unavailable due to supply issues, there's going to be delays in the project. Since parts are ordered at different times, keep in mind any warranty or return periods. You may want to buy the relatively fail-proof parts now and save the breakable or possibly defective stuff for later on. Honestly, everyone's going to ask, so based on my rough calculation, it came out to around $1,700 to self-source, including shipping, which makes up quite a bit. This does not include any parts missing from this sheet. This easily surpasses the price of most kits I have seen, which range from $1,000 to $1,500, and does not even account for the extra parts and conveniences that those kits come with. One example is wiring harnesses and pre-cut acrylic panels. Things are just cheaper when bought and sold in bulk. So yes, the biggest con of self-sourcing is cost, along with keeping track of many orders from different vendors, potentially long delivery times, wrong or missing orders. I call this video series Project of the Year for a reason. Whether I get the parts by tomorrow or mid-year is anyone's guess. For pros of self-sourcing, you can pick every part you want and this applies more for the experts. Think maximum customization because you don't always know the brand of every part when you buy a kit. You can also spread the cost over a longer term, which is great for those on a tight budget. I am choosing the self-source route because it reminds me of my origin story in IT where I built my own computers as a teenager. Sure, I could go out and buy a pre-built e-machines for cheaper, but I got to learn computer hardware in the process. Maybe not quite a direct apples to apples comparison, but hopefully you get the point. If I didn't say part of it was pride, I would be lying to myself. This channel is DIY after all. Next video I will go into the actual buying so I can get things rolling. In the meantime, start figuring out which kit you want and order it. Or if you are self-sourcing like me, time for some spreadsheets and coffee.